This next story brings to mind the old story of the three little pigs. They built their houses out of straw, sticks, and bricks. The message was about strength, but it didn't say anything about heating and cooling bills. In this next story, Ruthie Zell adds to the list of possible building materials. The last things you do are the, uh, the floors and the baseboards, the trim. The new Richmond Heights home of Bill and Julie Newberry is nearly complete. There's no other house in town and only a handful in the bi-state area with its high level of energy efficiency. To fully appreciate what's going into it requires a trip back in time to June of 2007. When we first visited the site on Lindbergh Drive, construction had been underway for a few months. That's perfect. There are actually two attached row houses going up here. One for the Newberries, the other for sale. They're being built green, a reference to energy efficiency and the limited impact the houses will have on the environment. The cornerstone of this project insulated concrete forms. They're made of styrofoam and steel reinforcement bars or rebars. The styrofoam is designed with pegs to snap the forms together. They resemble king-sized Legos. The forms are stacked one floor at a time and cement is poured down the opening in the middle. It's easy to assemble. We're doing a majority of this work ourselves and the energy efficiency and the safety nice. is unmatched. How effective are they? Well, the insulation factor for exterior walls recommended by the EPA is 18. These homes will have a factor about double that. Another big benefit, superior strength. This home right here will be able to handle a direct tornado F3 hit. David Alexander Hit is the Newberry's project manager. He says homes based in concrete and steel exist throughout Asia, where he lived for a number of years. We are catching up, and there are many forward thinkers within this country. And once again, for myself as a project manager who takes pride in building new construction, new homes for my clients, I feel very proud of the fact that I'm giving them or participating in giving them a home that they, once again, feel the value for. The Newberries will quickly tell you they didn't set out to build a green home. They ended up making green choices. And they got some expert guidance along the way from here at the Earthway Center in the Grand Center neighborhood. Julie registered for one of the classes that I teach here at Earthways that's called Greening Your New Home, No Greenwashing Allowed. And it's about the basics of green building. And at that time, Julie said, well, I think I'd like to try to get our house certified under LEED, the U.S. Green Building Council's LEED rating system. And I have to say I was a little discouraging to her because they were fairly far along in the construction process. Usually, you, you register a building for LEED certification when you're in the planning stages so that everything is integrated and documented from the very get-go. But they already had walls up, the foundations were long done, um, clearing the property had already taken place months before she and I had this interaction. And I was very pleasantly surprised to hear from Julie a couple of months later that they did pursue lead registration and they were pursuing the documentation and they were looking at lead gold, which is the second highest level that you can attain because of the energy efficiency features of that house and because of the documentation that they had already been collecting. Several weeks after our first visit, we returned to see drilling for a ground source heating and cooling system. Ground source means exactly that. You're using the earth and the constant temperature of the earth at a depth just below frost line, which is like you go in a cave and it's 55, 57 degrees all year round. That constant earth temperature becomes your source for heat in the winter and a heat sink in the summer. You reach that source by boring a network of looping holes. In the case of the Newberry home, they reach 200 feet underground. Hoses are then run through those holes, filled with antifreeze, and connected to the home's heating and cooling unit. There are uh, no outdoor compressors. It's about the same size as a conventional unit, but it does a little more. 
So it'll be nice to sit in our backyard and not have to listen to our uh, compressor going on, like most people do. With much of the exterior work in hand, the Newberries turn their attention inside. We're getting ready to put it in now to double check that. A super high efficiency fireplace is being installed in the living room. It's much like the one in the living room of the Earth Waste Center. What makes them so efficient is that the air fueling the combustion comes from a direct vent in the wall adjacent to the fireplace. So instead of taking ambient air from the room that the fireplace is in and using that to fuel the combustion, this is taking outdoor air in directly into the fireplace heating it with wood if it was a um, conventional fireplace. And then there is a little convection fan that circulates that heated air out into the room. Well, come on in. We took care of um, sealing these hard returns. It's then, March 12, 2008, and Julie Newberry is giving an update tour uh, to real estate ego broker out. Chris Andrews and energy consultant yeah. Alexandra yeah. Templer. Between 10 and 12 percent reduction in the efficiency of the system. So really? That's okay. really great that, okay. that they did that. On the second floor, Templer explains yeah, the purpose of this polystyrene board covered in a silver reflective material overhead. It's called okay, P2000. Sure. Um, the first thing that we see is the reflective metal on the roof, and that's a radiant barrier. So it blocks what's called radiant heat. That's why you love being out in the sun and feeling the sun on you in the winter on a nice sunny day. As a certified eco-broker, Chris Andrews is versed in the environmental and health issues related to real estate transactions. For your benefit, we need to look at the issues of the house itself and, and, and the benefits that it can create for your life, whether it's an energy efficiency benefit, if it's a health issue, allergies, and we want to stay away from some carpeting and materials like that. Uh, we want to stay away from the paints that, that have toxic chemicals that can be slowly released in the air. Maybe you or I don't even notice that, but somebody with severe allergies or sensitivities, that might be a big impact on their life as they move into this house. Comfortable house. The Newberries are incorporating as many green principles as they can on this project. That includes recycling. Trees cut down on site are becoming flooring in the house, firewood, or mulch. Wood planks that were once fencing and a barn may not look like much at first glance. But for the Newberries, who are professional woodworkers, they're worth their weight in gold. Just look at how some of that wood has been transformed over the front porches. And uh, I hand cut all the, the notches, all the um, joinery, and uh, assembled it inside, and uh, finished it, and then uh, disassembled it, brought it out here, and put it, put it up. Even some of the smallest pieces of glass and pottery excavated from the site are becoming part of the Newberry home. And gave them to an artist friend of ours who, uh, who does cement castings, he does cement countertops and things like that, and we said, hey, could you put this glass into a cementitious mixture and make a windowsill for us? And he said, sure. And Be it aesthetics or efficiencies, the new berries have it covered, including the non-toxic paint on the walls and compact fluorescent light bulbs that give off the same illumination as conventional bulbs, but use a fraction of the electricity. Building isn't for wimps, so <laughs> you do need. This experience has taught them a lot, and they're happy to share what they've learned. Yeah. Would you now? Would you guys consider hiring yourselves out as consultants? <laughs> Absolutely, consulting. I'll talk about anything. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say never say never, but yeah, okay, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> that's a little bit different than you know yeah, being a general right. on a house. Yeah, that's know, true. That's, that is a lot different. I'd like to take a break for a couple of years before yeah. I do another house again. Yeah. You've got to find this all very exciting. It's very exciting, and it's very interesting. I'm continually learning things, working with green building subject matter, and it's a very exciting time to be, as an environmental educator, to be working with green because it's popular now. People are interested in it, and people are making the connection between environmental factors, personal economics, personal health, community health, all kinds of factors that are really interconnected but are invisible to a lot of our more conventional ways of thinking.